read you something. Asperger's syndrome is a mild and rare form of autism. It is typically characterized by difficulty establishing friendships and playing with peers, trouble accepting conventional social rules, and they dislike any change in setting or routine. Or broadloom. Doesn't say that last part, but you get my point. House doesn't have Asperger's. The diagnosis is much simpler. He's a jerk. Why do you think he took this case? Because he believes these parents? Because he wants to help a young boy? He sees himself in this kid, and he's trying to help himself. He doesn't want this. He needs it. In an article from September 11th of last year, 2014, talking about autism spectrum and some therapies that go along with the autism spectrum disorder, there was an important quote that I saw fit to put behind me so we can break it down and analyze it. It says, it's about positive engagement without forcing out bad behaviors. Students or people on the autism spectrum have been known to do STIMs, which are self-stimulating behaviors, and these are considered bad behaviors. When I was at Para back in Vernon, Connecticut, my overseeing special ed teacher told me that in order to get my student to stop STIMing, he would, I would need to show him my hands and put them down on my lap. And that was his cue to stop the stimming behavior. But I see self-stimulation as a way of calming oneself and taking notice of where they are mentally and emotionally and then being ready for the rest of their day. This teacher told me that his method of self-stimming was really, excuse the expression, a form of masturbation. It's packed into gyms, trying to look like how Calvin Klein or Tommy Hilfiger said they should. Isn't that what a man looks like? <laughs> ah, self-improvement is masturbation. Now self-destruction. Let's spend just one more moment on this topic, and let's use our SAT prep skills to analyze what Tyler Durden was saying in Fight Club. Self-improvement is to, and I used the PG term, the autism spectrum relative term of stimming. Self-improvement is to stimming as self destruction is to can you think of a word it sounds like that word that I didn't want to use well here it is folks masochism let's read it together self-improvement is to stimming as self-destruction is to masochism for the full definition Masochism is the tendency to derive pleasure, especially sexual gratification, from one's own pain or humiliation. So, wouldn't it be better that we accept and praise our autism spectrum students for having the wherewithal to know that they're not in the right frame of mind to continue the work that they're doing and let them stim in order to get ready to meet the next task head on. Let's move out of this idea right here and talk about the next article. Another article about autism spectrum from last year 
November 25th of 2014 states that Medicaid is looking to cover some autism therapies. Again, we're talking about the therapies here. And this article was broken down into three distinct parts. The first part talks on the rise how more children are being diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, ASD. And the statistic is one in 68 children nationwide are diagnosed. That's a pretty astute number. Next, the game changer. We know that early intervention strategies can be effective in assisting kids along the autism spectrum to reach a much higher level of functioning. And this is always something that we want, right? We want all of our students to succeed. Going along with that idea is the last section, still shut out. And the very last quote from the page says, you want an even playing field for all the kids in the state. What I found interesting about this article, great job to the writer, Magali Oliveira from Connecticut Health I-Team writer, but she forgot to mention that there are people who are specifically designed to work with these students, not just paras, not just special educators, but board certified behavior analysts. the previous article that I talked about, Josh Kovner of the Hartford Current wrote this article. Autistic teens need more help, and this is preparing them for adulthood with transitional education. As we know, transitional education for special ed students starts at the age of 16. And it took me almost reading the entire article before a mother spoke up and said when transitional planning starts at 16 by the time it's up and running the student will not get any use out of it that's a really important point i do like how it talks about the treatment should focus on vocational skills following directions and hygiene everything that will set up the child for a better shot at independence as a young adult. And um, this article does repeat the exact same statistic that it is on the rise. The diagnosis of people with autism spectrum disorder still the one in 68 as of January 14th of this year. We're nearing the end of the year. I wonder if it's changed. Probably not that much, but we'll see. What I really love about this article is the circle graph that shows T 
teens with autism one year after leaving high school. They're competitively employed, it's only 15%. They don't work or go to school, that's 21%. If they have other education, 7%. Other employment, 10%. And higher education, this one's outstanding, it's 46%. That's something to wring our hands about. I'm so excited about that one. So I'll take a look. Next month, October, is Bullying Awareness Month. And the reason that I bring that up is because gender inequality is more well known in the bullying realm. Boys are more aggressive, physically aggressive, and girls are more emotionally and verbally aggressive. Well, in an article about the autism spectrum for this video's purpose, it's rare to find girls with this disorder. However, they do exist. And there's a study going on to learn the differences between boys and girls with autism, how girls respond to treatment, and how the girls perceive and react to social signals. A book that I really want to read is written by a mother of someone on the autism spectrum. The book is called What Color is Monday? And I, I can't say enough. Schools are pushing reading as opposed to art, but this child that suggested that each day of the week has a different color associated with it, seems like he's living with a type of synesthesia that we should all love. to our lives and so what color is monday is a peak inside of our day-to-day -day life that, that every family goes through but that autism just adds a little bit of extra fun for us one night i was cooking dinner and it was a lot of chaos as usual some homework um, some tired toddlers a lot of activity going on and jack came up to me and, and his words kind of parted the chaos and he said in his clip tone what what color do you see from monday and I turned to him and I said, Jack, I don't see the days of the week as color. I don't know what you mean. And he went on to tell me what color he associates with every day of the week. And so when I was struggling to come up with a title for the book, what color is Monday just seemed to be the perfect 